So we want to say that uh, uh, probability uh, of, uh, uh, let me call it, probability that you go from pi to pk1 is equal to the probability that you go from pi to pk2 and this is equal this is equal all the way to 1 over the total number of outgoing uh, links in pi yeah? so this simply means uh, right for all of the web pages so that say here pj points to pi pj points to pk <coughs> probability is uh, um, uh, to go to that page is exactly the same, uh, right? Now, if you, and uh, how would you, so if this is a PDP dangling web page, uh, what is then the explanation of this 1 over n? It simply says if you are at a dangling web page, there is equal probability to go to any other web page on the web whatsoever and this probability is of course then 1 over the number of uh, web pages so, right and now instead of zeros sorry because previously I thought like if it's a dangling node then it's sort of like not really pointing to anything it will be just like a whole world of zeros yes the probability of pointing to anything else will be zero that's correct so we are now tweaking the model in this model, so initial model looked like this. Uh, that's a very good point. Initial model looked like that, but uh, and then this one maybe looks like this, and then this one points back. But for example, here there are no outgoing edges. Now what we do is we add for absolutely every single uh, a web page, uh, we add one very weak edge, uh, right? So this will be almost a complete graph, not quite because uh, this, for example, uh, maybe if there is no link in opposite direction, there is no edge, but uh, the number of the uh, edges dramatically increase, and that's now important. You see, in this matrix, uh, there are very few non-zero entries, uh, right? Because in every row, there is only a handful of non-zero entries only in the columns that correspond to the pages to which this page points. These matrices are called sparse matrices. Uh, and of course, you would not encode this uh, uh, as a, a graph of adjacencies because it would be of size 100 billion by 100 billion filled mostly with zeros. How would you encode this? You would simply list uh, for every uh, row where are the non-zero entries, right? And of course, multiplying a vector by a sparse matrix is extremely simple because you simply see where are non-zero entries in the column and you choose the corresponding uh, entries uh, in the row vector and you just multiply them, right, and sum them. So this multiplication of a vector and this matrix can be done extremely fast. But unfortunately, precisely, as uh, uh, so you see here, this matrix is no longer as sparse because a whole bunch of zeros has been replaced by um, 1 over n, right? But we will see that despite this uh, multiplication of a vector with this matrix can be done in a very fast way. Okay, so this was the first remedy, what we do at uh, uh, dangling nodes. Yes? Uh, this was the dangling node. Does that mean you could also jump to the page of your Yes. 
So this is, of course, everything happens. So the question is, uh, if you are at a dangling node, uh, is there a probability to jump back to the same dangling node? And the answer is yes, right? But the probability for this to happen is uh, 1 over n. And the probability that you end up in a loop, you're jumping at the same place over and over is 1 over n to the power k. And this, because n is so large, this vanishes. <coughs> extremely quickly, so, so to speak, in all practical purposes, probability to jump to any place is negligible, any particular place, right? So, um, but yes, we, you can jump to the very same, uh, uh, why? because you see, it won't make a difference, and making it not uniform by avoiding uh, the diagonal will just make the thing messy. And the uh, uh, important thing is uh, this matrix now, as it is, has one extremely important property, the sum of all of each row it, uh, sums exactly to 1, right? Here is 1, and of course here is also 1, because these guys are equal and uh, equal to the no number of non-zero entries, so this is 1. These matrices are called stochastic matrices, and they are extremely important, and uh, they have extremely, they have lots of applications, and they have ex nice properties uh, with respect to the structure of their eigenvalues, uh, right? But we will talk about that uh, uh, later. Uh, yes. So we are the assumption that if you go to any banking bank, uh, bank you know, mm -hmm. the chance of you going up, like the chance of you jumping to any other node is the same. Yes. But isn't that like, how, how would you prove that? Just in, in real life, your browsing history. Okay. So right okay, here. that's a very good point. You see, this gives you a theoretical model. And the model is of a random surfer who pays no attention to the content of web pages. He simply goes to a web page and randomly clicks. It can be a program. Randomly clicks on a link and keeps doing that. When it gets stuck to a dangling web page, it picks a new starting point totally at random. Now, is this an adequate a uh, description of what we really do? The answer is no, right? And in fact, uh, this is bare bone Google algorithm that explains uh, how Google algorithm works, but we will then show um, refinements uh, that, uh, uh, give, uh, that are more adequate to real uh, human use. For example, uh, when you are on a web page, is, uh, are you equally likely to click on every link? No, so maybe one link is some legalistic disclaimer. No one clicks on that, uh, uh, right? Um, so what, how would you, if you are really Google, how would you then choose the probabilities uh, if you are at a given web page to go to another web page? Uh, you have to assign, you want to make your model closer to human use because, of course, then the page ranks will more accurately reflect the human importance of the web pages. So if you are Google, how would you decide how to assign the page ranks? You see, sorry, the probabilities of picking a link. Yes? You probably need another algorithm to look through the HTML code. For that. Okay, so one possibility would be an algorithm to look for HTML code, because there are statistics that we are more likely to click on links that are closer to the top, or to kind of try to figure out semantically what is the kind of value of, the, of that link in terms of what is the next web page. But this is a terrible way of doing things because it involves semantics. And there is no such a thing as AI uh, in genuine sense, namely 
machines cannot handle meaning. We don't know how to encode meaning whatsoever, right? Uh, but, but, you are the owner of the Google. You give a wonderful browser that is called Chrome, and people use it. And what does Chrome do? It sends, whenever you click on a link, it sends information to Google that this link has been clicked. And Google stores that. So how can you then assign the probabilities uh, with this knowledge? The frequency. the frequency of using the, the frequency of using the link, right? So you see, or for example, when you type in the search uh, term, the search term, and your spelling is as lousy as mine, and you make a spelling mistake, Google immediately asks you, "Did you mean that?" Do you think that Google uh, runs this edit distance to figure out what you meant? No. It uses, again, the same trick. If you made a mistake, then in all likelihood you will realize that, fix the spelling, and search again. So they simply look for misspelled words. What was the most frequent words that people were searching for next time. And that's what they recommend you. And this is crucial. This is called collaborative filtering. And it is real. You see, Google makes fortune by spying on all of us relentlessly, <laughs> right? And some of the stuff that they do, you just don't want to know. But even Facebook, I hear that uh, uh, Facebook actually monitors which web pages you visit, even when you are not opening, uh, you didn't open your Facebook page. Why do they do that? Uh, well, not probably not to give it to NSA or CIA. They do it because they want to push products on you, right? Why do you think the Gmail is free? They, the machine reads your mail, and if you manage skiing vacation pops an ad about skis, right? So this is a brilliant way how uh, internet applications handle la lack of ability to understand semantics. Humans who use the application, of course, understand that, and the machine simply keeps track of probabilities that certain events happen and uses them for its own operation. So for example, here, rather than putting this, uh, this will be in real Google matrix. Uh, it will be like this, pj. And here is the probability um, of uh, pj to pk, if this is web page pk. And then 0, 0. And here is probability from pj to go to pl if this is with page pl. So to answer your question, in fact, in the real Google algorithm, these are not all the same numbers. They are refined. They will be probability. How often? So what's the probability? If I'm here, how often people go here and versus how often they go there, and these numbers are chosen accordingly, right? But uh, so uh, the reason why I did it this way, because the algorithm is sufficiently hard uh, without the refinement, so I usually present first uh, the kind of simplified uh, um, uh, algorithm so that you see uh, what's behind uh, the hood in the algorithm and then I'll explain uh, um, the refinement uh, how uh, web pages are chosen and lo and behold uh, these numbers also are not 1 over n. Um, where is it? Uh, yeah, these numbers, uh, no, 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 no. Um, 
gear. They are not one over n. Um, if you are at a sports web page and you randomly jump to another web page, probability that you are jumping to a sports web page is probably larger than probability if you are on a sports web page to jump on algorithms web page, right? So in fact, Google algorithm refines this further by assigning these uh, probabilities, but in a very, very, very kind of restricted way uh, by grouping this in only 16 categories. Uh, why is that? Uh, what do you think? Uh, what is the problem if here, instead of n, I put some more meaningful, say, I can, in fact, monitor uh, my surfer from which any web page, where he did he jump next time, if he didn't follow a link. I can have this information, too. But it would be a piece of that for the algorithm. What do you think? Why? So, for example, here, there are just a few places where you have to put different numbers. But what happens if all of these numbers were different? Mm, to multiply the vector by the matrix. Exactly. Time. Then you are really running into genuinely non-sparse matrix, a matrix that has lots of structure, and for such matrices there is no way out but to brute force multiplication, and imagine, you know, this is matrix of size billion by billion, or hundreds billions by hundreds billions. So you have to keep things fairly regular, but the point is that even if you do that, the algorithm works remarkably well. How do I know that? Well, just think how much money these two bastards have, right? <laughs> Okay, so now how do we handle the problem of not escaping from these islands, right? So the second problem, oh uh, yes, uh, before we move to the second problem, we want to describe this matrix in a little bit better way. Uh, so the original matrix we call G0, and G1 can be described in a very, very simple way. First, we will define a vector D. D is the dang dangling vector, and it's everywhere zero, except one where the dangling node is. Right, so here is, a, uh, so I should say uh, D, uh, say DI is equal to one if and only if uh, uh, PI is dangling. Okay. <clears throat> now G1, is obviously matrix G0 plus a matrix that looks like this. It's everywhere zeros if the node is not dangling. And if the node is dangling, then it's 1 over n, 1 over n, 1 over n. Right? How can we write this matrix? This matrix is simply 1 over n times, uh, uh, OK, I should put here that this is actually D transpose because I wrote it as a row, right? So uh, times uh, D times a vector uh, E uh, so just uh, uh, E transpose, where vector E, so I'll write it also here in the transpose version, is just vector 
of ones everywhere. Huh? So E i is equal one for all i. Now, what happens if I do matrix multiplication between D and uh, E T? Well, D looks like this. Uh, 0, 0, and then 1, 0, 0, and then 1, and so forth. And then um, vector, uh, the other matrix, vector, right, is just 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Can I multiply, are these two matrices compatible for multiplication? Yes, right, because this dimension has to be equal so this dimension has to be equal to this dimension, and it is 1. So what will be this matrix? Well, if I multiply also with 1 over n, the product will be non-zero only, and it will be the entire row only when I hit 1, right? Because when I hit 1, then uh, I will go with... Uh, uh, all of these ones, it will generate a whole row of ones, right? So this will produce all zeros, and then a row of all ones. Only where this is dangling, multiply the law by 1 over n, and you get this. So we conclude g1 equals to g0 plus 1 over n d times e transpose. So so notice G1 is not as sparse as G0, but the non-sparse part is actually has very compact representation, which we will use when we multiply uh, these matrices by variables. Okay, so next problem is, uh, next problem is what do we do if we uh, enter something that looks like this, right? And there is nothing, no outgoing link, right? <coughs> um, this would be a strongly connected component of this graph because you have a path from every point here to every point there, but there are no outgoing links. And of course, if a random surfer ends up inside, he is in trouble, right? He can never leave. And we solve this by modifying his behavior so that at every, uh, at, in, at every step, he, with small probability, right, say probability of about uh, 10 to 15 percent, or say uh, maybe 1 percent, uh, we have to talk about that, but with small probability, he doesn't follow the links, but jumps randomly to a new web page. Right? So now this clearly solves this problem, because even if he uh, gets stuck inside, eventually, right, he will jump out and continue surfing, right? right? So this is the second fix. The first fix that the Google guys had to do was this. And they discovered it by kind of trial and error. They tried to compute Google PageRank without this. And they realized that the, um, the PageRank of some web pages started growing. And all other page ranks were dwindling to zero. And when they saw uh, what was happening, it turned out that they were the dangling nodes that were just accumulating. You will see from the way how they computed the page rank. So that was the first fix. So what we want to do now is we want to do another fix uh, and see how our matrix changes. And this is the real, quote-unquote, a uh, kind of initial Google uh, matrix because when they started the whole thing, they didn't have this information how many times people click on what link. So 
they had to uh, give uh, equal probability to everything. And lo and behold, the first Google matrix, matrix was exactly the matrix that I'm going to describe now. Um, so this is what happens. We modify our matrix as follows. Uh, so here is a dangling web page, and it has all 1 over n's, uh, 1 over n's. Here is a non-dangling web page, uh, and say it has here 1 over uh, 23, because this is how many, uh, and then here also 1 over 23, because there are all together uh, 23 uh, non uh, outgoing links, right? But we want to change this now, right? We want to change so that all these zeros will become non-zeros because whenever I'm at a page, page uh, web page pi, with some probability, so with some probability alpha, I so probability alpha is probability. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, a surfer follows uh, a link, which means that 1 minus alpha is the probability uh, that uh, uh, the surfer <coughs> jumps uh, to a random uh, web page. So, uh, what is then the probability that, uh, so this will now be changed. What is the probability if I'm at PI that I will end up here? Well, the, the only way to go there is by random jump. Probability to do random jump is 1 minus alpha, but probability, and then I have to multiply this with probability to end up at precisely that web page. And all web pages are equally likely. So the probability is 1 minus alpha divided by what? Yes. Minus 23. So the probability, careful, careful. So if I'm so this is the probability that I will go to the web page P1. There is no outgoing link from PI to P1. So the only way to go from PI to P1 is if I decide instead of following links uh, to actually do a random jump. So that's probability to do random jump. But not only that I have to run, do a random jump, the target has to be that particular <coughs> web page. What's the probability that I choose this web page? Or, okay. 1 over n. So it is probability is 10. So probability to go from pi to p1 will be 1 minus alpha times 1 over n. Right? So in the new matrix, in the new matrix, I will have 1 minus alpha divided by n, 1 minus alpha divided by n, then I hit 1 over 23. So this will be alpha times 1 over 23 plus, so you see now, if I am at pi, and there is an outgoing link to PJ. What's the probability if I'm at PI to end up in PJ? How can I end in PJ? There are two ways. You start from PI and then go to PJ. Exactly. So first way is if I follow the link. Probability will be alpha that I follow the link and 1 over 23 because there are 23 outgoing links. But I can also end up there by randomly jumping. So I have to add here 
1 minus alpha divided by n. So all of these guys, all of these entries, so what is the, uh, the entry is, so if all of these entries do have 1 minus alpha divided by n, except that also those with direct links, I have alpha times, so this is alpha times 1 over the number of outgoing links for pi. Now notice uh, this matrix. Ah, what happens if I do that for this row? Well, let's see. Probability is uh, uh, that I follow this weak link, uh, so it will be alpha times 1 over n, plus probability that I randomly jump 1 minus alpha times 1 over n, which is actually just 1 over n. So multiplication by alpha and addition of 1 minus alpha divided by n does not affect this row at all, right? But it allows us now to write um, the, our matrix to uh, come to, this will be the matrix G, the holy matrix G or Google matrix. And we have to see how we obtain it. We obtain it as uh, you are making sure uh, I yeah. got. Uh, yeah, so can you that that board there? Yeah. Um, yeah, because there are people who cannot come to class, so. Uh, and I'm, of course, so excited that you might want to watch me five times at home, right? So we have to make sure that the, the recording is okay. Okay, so this new matrix G is obtained, how? By multiplying G1 by alpha. So it will be alpha times G1, right? multiply all entries, and then I have to add 1 minus alpha divided by n, and then where do I add? This factor ends up at absolutely every single cell. So this will be just uh, uh, E times E transpose. Right, what will be this matrix here? Well, that's the matrix that everywhere it looks like 1 minus alpha divided by n, 1 minus alpha divided by n, absolutely everywhere. So I simply multiply my original matrix, so we can now write it in expanded form. So this is alpha, and then here we have G0, plus what did we have? Uh, we had, uh, did I erase it? Uh, we had uh, uh, 1 over n, then dangling node times E transpose, plus 1 minus alpha divided by n, uh, then E times E transpose. And this is, lo and behold, this is the original matrix that Google people used. Now, what do we mean? How did they use it? One can show, so main features. Uh, of G. Indeed, uh, there exists exactly one uh, row such that rho times g gives you back rho. Right? This means that with these fixes, this perfectly fits the probabilistic behavior of that random surfer. Because whenever, wherever I am, 
if I am at a dangling node, I will jump any, anywhere with the probability 1 over n. If I am at a non-dangling node, I can still jump everywhere with probability 1 minus alpha divided by n. Plus, with probability alpha, I can jump to, I can go with the link and go to the linked web page. So this not only fixes the problem in the sense that it guarantees existence of the page rank vector, right? But it does it in a completely intuitively justifiable way, right? And moreover, uh, but now we, there is, uh, how do you get that vector? You cannot have a program do random surfing and you count visits. It would be just uh, impossibly slow. Well, what one can show that a row is a equal to the limit of a row times g to the power n, when n goes to infinity. Right? So if you take a large number n and compute this, you will almost get precisely back vector rho. Right? Uh, so that's one feature. Um, how do we compute this? Do, what do you think? Do we take this vector, this matrix G to the end power? No. This is what we did last uh, semester with matrix multiplication. Uh, it all matters. It would be crazy to compute this in the following way. Uh, right to uh, group them from right to left and compute g times g times g. Instead, what you compute is uh, rho times g times g times g and so forth uh, times g at the end. <coughs> Why? Because uh, rho times g is just a vector. So you will again have a new vector times g, and then a new vector times g. So all what you have to do is, in fact, you can start with rho equals just uniform distribution of probabilities. Your random surfer can start with equal probability everywhere. But it's even better. No matter what vector you start, 